chapter 19 excretory products and their elimination animals accumulate ammonia urea uric acid carbon dioxide water and ions like na plus k plus cl minus phosphate sulfate etc either by metabolic activities or by other means like excess ingestion these substances have to be removed totally or partially. In this chapter, you will learn the mechanism of elimination of these substances with special emphasis on common nitrogenous waste. Ammonia, urea and uric acid are the major forms of nitrogenous waste excreted by the animals. Ammonia is the most toxic form and requires large amount of water for its elimination. Whereas, uric acid being the least toxic can be removed with a minimum loss of water. The process of excreting ammonia is ammonotelism. Many bony fishes, aquatic amphibians and aquatic insects are ammonotelic in nature. Ammonia, as it is readily soluble, is generally excreted by diffusion across body surfaces or through gill surfaces in fish as ammonium ions. Kidneys do not play any significant role in its removal. Terrestrial adaptation necessitated the production of lesser toxic nitrogenous waste like urea and uric acid for conservation of water. Mammals, many terrestrial amphibians and marine fishes mainly excrete urea and are called ureotelic animals. Ammonia produced by metabolism is converted into urea in the liver of these animals and released into the blood which is filtered and excreted out by the kidneys. Some amount of urea may be retained in the kidney matrix of some of these animals to maintain a desired osmolarity. Reptiles, birds, land snails and insects excrete nitrogenous waste as uric acid in the form of pellet or paste with a minimum loss of water and are called uricotelic animals. A survey of animal kingdom presents a variety of excretory structures. In most of the invertebrates, these structures are simple tubular forms whereas vertebrates have complex tubular organs called kidneys. Some of these structures are mentioned here. Protonephridia or frame cells are the excretory structures in the platyhelminths, flatworms, example planaria. Rotifers, some annelids, and the cephalocordate, amphioxus. Protonephridia are primarily concerned with ionic and fluid volume regulation, that is, osmoregulation. Nephridia are the tubular excretory structures of earthworms and other annelids. Nephridia help to remove nitrogenous waste and maintain a fluid and ionic balance. Malphigian tubules are the excretory structures of most of the insects including cockroaches. Malphigian tubules help in the removal of nitrogenous waste and osmoregulation. Antenal glands or green glands perform the excretory function in crustaceans like prawns. Human excretory system in humans, the excretory system consists of a pair of kidneys, one pair of ureters, a urinary bladder and a urethra. Kidneys are reddish brown bean shaped structures situated between the levels of last thoracic and third lumbar vertebrae close to the dorsal inner wall of the abdominal cavity. Each kidney of an adult human measures 10 to 12 cm in length, 5 to 7 cm in width, 2 to 3 cm in thickness with an average weight of 120 to 170 gram. Towards the center of the inner concave surface of the kidney is a notch called hilum through which ureter, blood vessels and nerves enter. 
Inner to the hilum is a broad funnel shaped space called the renal pelvis with projections called calluses. The outer layer of kidney is a tough capsule. Inside the kidney, there are two zones an outer cortex and an inner medulla. The medulla is divided into a few cortical masses, medullary pyramids projecting into the calluses, singular calyx. The cortex extends in between the medullary pyramids as renal columns called columns of Bertini. Each kidney has nearly 1 million complex tubular structures called nephrons, which are the functional units. Each nephron has two parts, the glomerulus and the renal tubule. Glomerulus is a tuft of capillaries formed by the afferent atriole, a fine branch of renal artery. Blood from the glomerulus is carried away by an efferent arteriole. The renal tubule begins with a double-walled cup-like structure called Bowman's capsule, which encloses the glomerulus. Glomerulus along with Bowman's capsule is called the Malphigian body or renal corpuscle. The tubule continues further to form a highly coiled network proximal convoluted tubule, PCT. A hairpin shaped handless loop is the next part of the tubule which has a descending and an ascending limb. The ascending limb continues as another highly coiled tubular region called distal convoluted tubule, DCT. The DCTs of many nephrons open into a straight tube called collecting duct, many of which converge and open into the renal pelvis through medullary pyramids in the calluses. The Malphigian corpuscle, PCT, and DCT of the nephron are situated in the cortical region of the kidney, whereas the loop of Henle dips into the medulla. In majority of the nephrons, the loop of Henle is too short and extends only very little in the medulla. Such nephrons are called cortical nephrons. In some of the nephrons, the loop of Henle is very long and run deep into the medulla. These nephrons are called juxta medullary nephrons. The efferent arteriole emerging from the glomerulus forms a fine capillary network around the renal tubule called the peritubular capillaries. A minute vessel of this network runs parallel to the Henle's loop forming a U-shaped vasa recta. Vasa recta is absent or highly reduced in cortical nephrons. Urine formation Urine formation involves three main processes namely glomerular filtration, reabsorption and secretion that takes place in different parts of the nephron. The first step in urine formation is the filtration of blood which is carried out by the glomerulus and is called the glomerular filtration. On an average, 1100 to 1200 ml of blood is filtered by kidneys per minute which constitute roughly 1 by 5th of the blood pumped out by each ventricle of the heart in a minute. The glomerular capillary blood pressure causes filtration of blood through three layers that is the endothelium of the glomerular blood vessel, the epithelium of the Bowman's capsule and a basement membrane between these two layers. The epithelial cell of the Bowman's capsule called podocytes are arranged in an intricate manner so as to leave some minute spaces called filtration slits or slit pores. Blood is filtered so finely through these membranes that almost all the constituent of the plasma except the proteins pass onto the lumen of the Bowman's capsule. Therefore, it is considered as a process of ultrafiltration. The amount of filtrate formed by the kidneys 
पर मिनट इज कॉल्ड ग्लोमोरुलर फिल्ट्रेशन रेट जी एफ आर जी एफ आर इन अल्दी इंडिविजुअल इज अप्रॉक्सीमेटली वन ट्वेंटी फाइव एम एल पर मिनट दैट इज वन एटी लीटर्स पर डे द किडनीज हैव बिल्ट इन मैकेनिजम्स फॉर द रेगुलेशन ऑफ ग्लोमोरुलर फिल्ट्रेशन रेट One such efficient mechanism is carried out by the Juxta Glomerular Apparatus (JGA). JGA is a special sensitive region formed by cellular modification in the distal convoluted tubule and the afferent arteriole at the location of their contact. A fall in GFR can activate the JG cells to release renin. which can stimulate the glomerular blood flow and thereby the gfr glomerular filtration rate back to normal a comparison of the volume of the filtrate formed per day that is 180 liters per day with that of urine released that is 1.5 liters suggest that nearly 99% of the filtrate has to be reabsorbed by the renal tubules this process is called reabsorption the tubular epithelial cells in the different segments of nephron perform this either by active or passive mechanism for example substances like glucose amino acid na plus etc in the filtrate are reabsorbed actively whereas the nitrogenous waste are absorbed by passive transport reabsorption of water also occurs passively in the initial segments of the nephron during urine formation the tubular cells secrete substances like h plus k plus and ammonia into the filtrate tubular secretion is also an important step in the urine formation as it helps in the maintenance of ionic and acid base balance of body fluids functions of the tubules proximal convoluted tubule pct pct is lined by simple cuboidal brush border epithelial which increases the surface area for reabsorption nearly all of these essential nutrients and 70 to 80% of electrolytes and water are reabsorbed by this segment pct also helps to maintain the ph and ionic balance of the body fluids by selective secretion of hydrogen ions ammonia and potassium ions into the filtrate and by absorption of hco3- from it henle's loop reabsorption is minimum in its ascending limb however this region plays a significant role in the maintenance of high osmolarity of medullary interstitial fluid the descending limb, limb of loop of henle is permeable to water but almost impermeable to electrolyte this concentrates the filtrate as it moves down the ascending limb is impermeable to water but allows transport of electrolytes actively or passively therefore as the concentrated filtrate pass upwards it gets diluted due to the passage of electrolytes to the medullary fluid distal convoluted tubule dct conditional reabsorption of na plus and water takes place in this segment dct is also capable of reabsorption of hco3 minus and selective secretion of hydrogen and potassium ions and ammonia to maintain the ph and sodium potassium balance in the blood collecting duct this long duct extends from the cortex of the kidney to the inner parts of the medulla large amount of water could be reabsorbed from this region to produce a concentrated urine this segment allows passage of small amounts of urea into the medullary interstitium 
to keep up the osmolarity. It also plays a role in the maintenance of pH and ionic balance of blood by selective secretion of H plus and K plus ions. Mechanism of concentration of the filtrate Mammals have the ability to produce a concentrated urine. The Henle's loop and the Vasa recta play a significant role in this. The flow of filtrate in the two limbs of the Henle's loop is in the opposite direction and thus forms a counter current. The flow of blood through the two limbs of Vasa recta is also in a counter current pattern. The proximity between the Henle's loop and Vasa recta as well as counter current in them help in maintaining and increasing osmolarity towards the inner medullary interstitium that is from 300 mOS moles per liter in the cortex to about 1200 mOS moles per liter in the inner medulla. This gradient is mainly caused by NaCl and urea. NaCl is transported by the ascending limb of, limb of Henle's loop which is exchanged with the descending limb of Vasa recta. NaCl is returned to the interstitium by the ascending portion of Vasa recta. Similarly, small amount of urea enter the thin segment of the ascending limb of Henle's loop which is transported back to the interstitium by the collecting tubule. The above described transport of substances facilitated by special arrangement of Henle's loop and Vasa recta is called the counter current mechanism. This mechanism helps to maintain a concentration gradient in the medullary interstitium. Presence of such interstitial gradient helps in an easy passage of water from the collecting tubule, thereby concentrating the filtrate urine. Human kidneys can produce urine nearly four times concentrated than the initial filtrate formed. Regulation of kidney function The functioning of kidneys is efficiently monitored and regulated by hormonal feedback mechanisms involving the hypothalamus, JGA and to a certain extent the heart. Osmoreceptors in the body are activated by changes in blood volume, body fluid volume and ionic concentration. An excessive loss of fluid from the body can activate these receptors which stimulate the hypothalamus to release antidiuretic hormone ADH or vasopressin from the neurohypophysis. ADH facilitates water reabsorption from latter parts of the tubule, thereby preventing diuresis. An increase in body fluid volume can switch off the osmoreceptors and suppress the ADH release to complete the feedback. ADH can also affect the kidney function by its constrictory effects on blood vessels. This causes an increase in blood pressure. An increase in blood pressure can increase the glomerular blood flow and thereby the glomerular filtration rate. The JGA plays a complex regulatory role. A fall in glomerular blood flow, glomerular blood pressure, glomerular filtration rate can activate the JG cells to release renin which converts angiotensinogen in the blood to angiotensin 1 and further to angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 being a powerful vasoconstrictor increases the glomerular blood pressure and thereby GFR. Angiotensin 2 also activates the adrenal cortex to release aldosterone. Aldosterone causes reabsorption of Na plus and water from the distal parts of the tubule. This also leads to an increase in the blood pressure and GFR.
This complex mechanism is generally known as the renin angiotensin mechanism. An increase in blood flow to the atria of the heart can cause the release of atrial natriuretic factor ANF. ANF can cause vasodilation that is dilation of the blood vessels and thereby decrease the blood pressure. ANF mechanism therefore acts as check on the renin angiotensin mechanism. Micturation Urine formed by the nephrons is ultimately carried to the urinary bladder where it is stored till a voluntary signal is given by the central nervous system CNS. This signal is initiated by stretching of the urinary bladder as it gets filled with the urine. In response, the stretch receptors on the walls of the bladder send signals to the central nervous system. The central nervous system passes on motor messages to initiate the contraction of smooth muscles of the bladder and simultaneous relaxation of the urethral sphincter, causing the release of the urine. The process of release of urine is called micturation and the neural mechanism causing it is called the micturation reflex. An adult human excretes on an average 1 to 1.5 liters of urine per day. The urine formed is a light yellow colored watery fluid which is slightly acidic, pH is 6.0 and has a characteristic odor. On an average, 25 to 30 gram of urea is excreted out per day. Various conditions can affect the characteristics of urine. Analysis of urine helps in clinical diagnosis of many metabolic disorders as well as malfunctions of the kidney. For example, presence of glucose, glucose glycosuria and ketone bodies, ketone urea in urine are indicative of diabetes mellitus. Role of other organs in excretion Other than the kidneys, lungs, liver and skin also help in the elimination of excretory waste. Our lungs remove large amount of CO2, approximately 200 ml per minute and also significant quantities of water every day. Liver, the largest gland in our body, secretes bile-containing substances like bilirubin, biliverdin, cholesterol, degraded steroid hormones, vitamins and drugs. Most of these substances ultimately pass out along with digestive waste. The sweat and sebaceous glands in the skin can eliminate certain substances through their secretion. Sweat produced by the sweat glands is a watery fluid containing NaCl, small amounts of urea, lactic acid, etc. Though the primary function of sweat is to facilitate a cooling effect on the body surface, it also helps in the removal of some of the waste mentioned above. Sebaceous glands eliminate certain substances like sterols, hydrocarbons and waxes through sebum. This secretion provides a protective oily covering for the skin. Do you know that small amounts of nitrogenous waste could be eliminated through saliva too? Disorders of the excretory system Malfunction of kidney can lead to accumulation of urea in blood, a condition called uremia, which is highly harmful and may lead to kidney failure. In such patients, urea can be removed by a process called hemodialysis. During the process of hemodialysis, the blood drained from a convenient artery is pumped into a dialysing unit called artificial kidney. Blood drained from a convenient artery is pumped into a dialysing unit after adding an anticoagulant like heparin. The unit contains a coiled cellophane tube surrounded by a fluid, dialysing fluid having the same composition as that of the plasma except the nitrogenous waste. 
the porous cellophane membrane of the tube allows the passage of molecules based on concentration gradient as nitrogenous waste are absent in the dilysing fluid these substances freely move out thereby uh, move out thereby clearing the blood the cleared blood is pumped back to the body through a vein after adding anti heparin to it this method is a boon for thousands of uremic patients all over the world kidney transplantation is the ultimate method in the correction of the acute renal failures that is kidney failure a functioning kidney is used in transplantation from a donor preferably a close relative to minimize its chances of rejection by the immune system of the host modern clinical procedures have increased the success rate of such a complicated technique renal calculi stone or in insoluble mass of crystallized salts oxalates etc formed within the kidney glomerular nephritis inflammation of glomeruli of the kidney summary many nitrogen containing substances iron carbon dioxide water etc that accumulate in the body have to be eliminated nature of nitrogenous wastes formed and their excretion vary among animals mainly depending on the habitat availability of water ammonia urea and uric acid are the major nitrogenous waste excreted protonephridia nephridia malpighian tubules green glands and the kidneys are the common excretory organs in animals they not only eliminate nitrogenous waste but also help in maintenance of ionic and acid base balance of the body fluids in humans the excretory system consists of one pair of kidneys a pair of ureters a urinary bladder and a urethra each kidney has over a million tubular structures called nephrons nephron is the functional unit of kidney and has two portion glomerulus and renal tubule glomerulus is a tuft of capillaries formed from afferent arterioles fine branches of renal artery the renal tubule starts with a double walled baumann's capsule and is further differentiated into a proximal convoluted tubule pct henle's loop hl and distal convoluted tubule dct the dcts of many nephrons join to a common collecting duct many of which ultimately open into the renal pelvis through the medullary pyramids the baumann's capsule encloses the glomerulus to form malpighian or renal corpuscle urine formation involves three main processes filtration reabsorption and secretion filtration is a non selective process performed by the glomerulus using the glomerular capillary blood pressure about 1200 ml of blood is filtered by glomerulus per minute to form 125 ml of the filtrate in baumann's capsule per minute gfr jga a specialized portion of the nephron plays a significant role in the regulation of gfr nearly 99% reabsorption of filtrate takes place through different parts of the nephron pct is the major site of reabsorption and selective secretion hl that is henle's loop primarily helps to maintain osmolar gradient 300 mos moles per liter to 1200 mos moles per liter within the kidney interstitium dct and a uh, collecting duct allow extensive reabsorption of water and certain elect- electrolytes by which hel- they help in osmo regulation h plus k plus and ammonia could be secreted into the filtrate by tubules to maintain the ionic balance and the ph of body fluids a counter current mechanism operates between the two limbs of the loop of the henle and those of vasa recta capillary parallel to henle's loop the filtrate gets concentrated as it moves down the descending limb but it is diluted by the ascending limb 
electrolytes and urea are retained in the interstitium by this arrangement dct and collecting duct concentrate the filtrate about four times that is from 300 mos moles per liter to 1200 mos moles per liter an excellent mechanism of conservation of water urine is stored in the urinary bladder till a voluntary signal from central nervous system carries out its release through urethra that is micturition skin lungs and liver also assist in excretion so here we complete the reading of excretion i hope you all enjoyed so please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and share it to your friends thank you so much